This is the 2019 Mitsubishi Triton sporting what is probably one of the biggest midlife facelifts I've seen in a while. The look has changed a lot. It's a lot more sharp, a lot more angular. You can almost confuse this thing for an all new model, but it's not. It's a new look from the windscreen forward and the rear fenders have been re-stamped, but the doors, cabin, tailgate and tub are all carry over from before. What else has changed though other than the looks? The best way to show you would be to compare it with a pre-facelift model. Here's one I prepared earlier. This is the Car Advice Triton. It's a 2016 GLX Plus with nearly 80,000 Ks on the clock. It's a hard working camera car, shifting stacks of camera gear and those smelly camera guys right around Australia. Aside from that eye catching Car Advice wrap, its only modifications from stock are some pretty worn out Bridgestone Jeweler all terrain tyres side steps, snorkel and that mountain top roller cover to make the tub secure and waterproof. The interior is mostly a carryover affair without any major changes. You'll notice these two are quite different but that's because of the spec differences between the two. Our Triton is a mid-spec while the new Triton here is a range topping GLS Premium. In the back it's pretty much the same story as the pre-facelift model. It's pretty spacious, reasonably comfortable. You do get a redesigned centre console here. There's a couple of USB points which is pretty good a little bit of storage there as well. And no air vents in that center console, but there is something up the top here. This thing is a fan and it actually sucks your air from the front, hot or cold, and then distributes it towards the guys in the back so they're not left out. It's worth noting that better seven inch infotainment display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is now available from GLX upwards in the new Triton. And that's a definite improvement over the old model. It's a decent unit too. It doesn't have any native navigation, but it is nice and easy to use. There are a lot of things shared between the new and old Triton. It is just a facelifted model after all. Looking in the interior here, there's a lot of things that are the same, but there is a few little tweaks that makes the new model a little bit nicer. I have to say though, not having a digital speedo readout in the instrument cluster here on the new one or the old one is a real shame, I think. There's the same 2.4 litre diesel making 133 kilowatts at 3,500 RPM and 430 Newton meters at 2,500 RPM. This old model has the 5 speed automatic gearbox and gets along reasonably well. It's not as powerful as other utes but there is a decent hit of torque there around 2,000 revs and it's pretty refined to boot. This new Triton, most crucially in my opinion, gets an extra ratio in the automatic gearbox. It's now a six speed and I've looked at the ratio numbers and that means you've got a lower first gear and a higher top gear overall. So that means your car's more refined. It's using less revs on the highway so it's a bit quieter. Theoretically, it should use less fuel as well. But also having a lower first gear means you're actually better off-road. So it's the best of both worlds. Interestingly, the new Triton has a quoted combined fuel consumption figure one litre higher per 100 k's than the old one. The steering and suspension has been retuned with this facelift, along with some bigger brakes at the front. You still have Super Select, which is unique for this range and very handy. There's still low range and a rear locker, but the Triton now also has an off-road mode switch, a la Pajero Sport. Safety is a big deal for the new Triton. There's AEB standard across the range now on the new model. That works up to 140 k's per hour. This is a big deal and only matched by a few in the segment. There's also a 360 degree reversing camera on higher specs, along with sensors front and rear. There's also a new feature called ultrasonic misacceleration mitigation. It senses whether you've accidentally selected drive or reverse and hits the brakes for you to save you driving into something. This new Triton gets seven years and 150,000 Ks worth of warranty, which is up from Mitsubishi's typical five years and 100,000 Ks. That's a huge warranty, and it's only beaten by the new Sangyong Muso in terms of outright coverage. Pricing has gone up across the range with this new look Triton. Expect to pay somewhere between $4,000 and $6,500 more, depending on what spec you go for. But at least that money is going somewhere. Along with this new look, you do have better safety, including AEB, which is a really big one for the four-wheel drive ute segment. The thing is a bit more refined and nicer to drive, especially with that extra ratio in the automatic gearbox. I think that really goes a long way. So while pricing has gone up across the board, one thing hasn't changed. The Triton still represents very, very good value for money in the four-wheel drive ute segment.